It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here. Did you know Windows 10 comes with not one, not two, but three browsers? You're going to lose one pretty soon. We'll also talk about Microsoft Teams. They're adding a kudos button as well as a meditation button. And then a new trick you can play with the Xbox wireless controller and pairing. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 711. Recorded Wednesday, February 10th, 2021. A double-edged fork. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Melissa. Like expired milk, 30% of your customers' data goes bad every year. And that's money down the drain. Visit Melissa's developer portal for free access to data quality APIs, demos, and code samples so you can freshen up your sour data today. With 1,000 records cleaned for free at melissa.com slash twit. And by Forward Networks. Forward Networks reduces business risk by revolutionizing the way large networks are managed. Their advanced software delivers a digital twin of the network, a completely accurate mathematical model in software. It's amazing. Get a demo at forwardnetworks.com slash twit. And by Hover. Whether you're a developer, photographer, or small business, Hover has something for you to expand your projects and get the visibility you want. Go to hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft. And here they are, the dynamic duo of Microsoft reporting, Miss Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com. Hello, Mary Jo. Hello from Construction Zone in Manhattan. She's getting her <laughs> facade repointed, which is not yes. a euphemism, folks. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> it, it has nothing to do with my personal facade. <laughs> no, it's the facade of her building, which, as I remember, you had done just recently, but that was the other oh, building. So, good Lord. the other building. All of New York is being repointed at this point. Pretty much. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah, fall on your side. head as you walk that's down why. town. Yeah. yeah. That's what they say. It's also a moneymaker for the city. Well, that, wait a so. minute. The city, it's a profit thing? Oh, yeah. They charge us for being, quote, in violation. <laughs> oh, my God. For, like, little oh pieces of cement maybe falling. Why that Abe beam I ought to. Yeah. And then on her right is the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. P.T. Therott of Therott.com. Oh. Yeah. Hello, Leo. Yeah. Hello, hello, Paul. <laughs> hello, Paul. It's a little dark in the uh, in the Therott dungeon today. Yeah, one of my two light bulbs is out. And, oh. um, <laughs> he, only, he only gets two a year, folks. <laughs> yeah. So I Sorry. thought maybe the snow had p accumulated past the window. No, including so the sun for the rest of the <laughs> figure this out. I don't want to put the. It takes a special small voltage. Small don't wattage. don't worry. <laughs> it's a small voltage thing. You just would understand. Yeah. <laughs> so, hello, hi, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome. Yeah. Here What's up again. in the world of Windows? <laughs> Anything? Not a ton. It's kind of a I slow week, isn't it? You know, I was saying. I was saying before we started, Microsoft's about to have two big events, right? And at least two big events, maybe more. And so I think right. they're trying to hold the news, oh. especially for Ignite. Oh. And then there's Build. And, you know, like I think they're trying to say, what can we hold in the hut put out right now to save it for the shows? Never hold it, Microsoft. It's just bad so, for so you. Total, you're just going to hurt yourself. You're just going to hurt yourself. It. Don't hold and it. And we're going to find it. We're, we will find That's it. That's true, too. <laughs> then you just give incent people to dig. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I mean, I, honestly, a bunch of the things we're going to talk about feel like things I could have waited on. I know. Ignite for. Yeah. Yeah, you true. Know? Yeah. It's a, you know, I think some of it is the times. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Listen, honestly, for whatever reason, maybe it's just because we're all a little more put upon than we had been in the past, but I felt 
really harried for much of the past year. You yeah. Know? Lisa's like uh, sleeping busy. well and she's saying, I can't figure out what's changed. And I said, I know what changed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she says, there's like a whole burden lifted off my shoulders. Because you'd wake up every morning going, what fresh hell is this? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. what's new? Yeah. Um, and even though COVID is still, you know, hanging heavy on the nation, we f I just feel like we can see the end is in sight. Right. right. Vaccines are happening. Yeah. And right we're getting ready York. for the big party, you know? It's a big yeah. party. The big the one where party. everyone's going to be in the same room. <laughs> yeah. Breathing the We're same mask. air. God, I can't wait. I look at old pictures and I go, what's, what, what, is, don't they understand how dangerous that is? <laughs> right. They're talking to look, each why other. Why does this look like the ballroom from The Shining? All of a sudden? Separate. I know. Yeah. It looks so weird when you see people near each other, like yeah. at the Super Bowl, right? You're like, yeah. what is what? happening? <laughs> they were all cardboard cutouts, it turned out, so it's okay. Yeah. yeah. The party right. afterwards wasn't, right? Like I know. You know, I look part. at that and I go, boy. But then maybe, I don't know, maybe it is okay. Well, know. you know, the NFL only had 900 COVID cases, so I think they knew what they were doing. I, yeah. You know what? I <laughs> they just, had some as, as I watched the Super Bowl come yeah. to a close, at wrapping up the football season, because I don't consider the Pro Bowl to be part of the season, but if yeah. ending the football season, I actually said a little prayer of thanks to Roger Goodell and the wow. NFL. I have never done that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, you know what? Thank you for uh, you know, getting this off the ground, and I That's know some was, semblance of normalcy. It was dangerous, and a lot of players had to stay from, away from their families mm -hmm. for six months and all that, but it was sure it was sure fun to have some football and something to yeah. watch of a Sunday. So I'm, I was. I felt that grateful. way about baseball as well, and, yeah. and actually basketball too. I mean, yeah. I think in in their own ways they each did pretty well. It's a you know it's the showbiz ethos which I live by. The show must go on. Right. That's why I'm sitting here with a broken leg, and I doesn't. You know what? I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna do. You know, Leo, if you were a horse, all I'm saying <laughs> you is you put me down. I know. <laughs> I know. You don't really have a broken leg. No, do you? I'm teasing. Okay, I'm, actually, I'm like, what happened? <laughs> I only get sick. I only get sick on vacations. It's a terrible thing. <laughs> I don't do it on purpose, right. but something in my head knows that I can't fall ill when we're on the air. So I just wait till a vacation and ruin it. But yep. hey, you know, better that than not be here for the show. I don't think I haven't. I don't think I've been sick since this COVID thing started. You shouldn't he be. Says, How would you get it? On wood. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. Right, and that's fact, true. You know, it's like, well, yeah. if you get a cold, that could have been COVID. That's another coronavirus. How, yeah, that's a good point. How did you get that? You know, it, well, what did you do? Sure. So enough of, enough of us. <laughs> <laughs> enough about us. What about Microsoft? <laughs> what do you guys have to say about us? <laughs> uh, Windows 10. I didn't even know there was such a thing as Legacy Edge. Yeah, yeah you knew. You know, Before it's like a little cridge. back leg on a whale. It doesn't really get yeah. used. Yeah, but they but left it lying around? It's yeah. in Windows. <laughs> How do I run it? Like a It's hidden, but you can. It's there, you can really? Run it. The old edge yeah. is still in Windows. Yeah. Yep. But you I, get edge and you get cridge. You get both. You what's get the name? Because you have a name edge. collision with new edge. Right. There is a edge. name conflict. Um, how, yeah. I think there's a trick. You uh, Once you've installed the new edge... You have to do something to unhide it. Oh, yeah, it's so, so weird. I had no yeah. idea. I know they did that with Internet Explorer, but they didn't exactly hide it. They just didn't give it an uh, you know yeah, start yeah, menu yeah, icon. Yeah. Well, they didn't right. have to because it has, does you know it has a different name. It launches itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> but edge. Yeah. It, it, there's two edges. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. a double-edged sword. <laughs> it's a, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Windows is a double-edged sword, but only until March. So they're phasing exactly. it out. They're getting rid of it. Right. So we, we knew already that as of the March patch Tuesday that they weren't going to do any more security updates for the old edge. But what we didn't really know, or maybe maybe we should have figured this out, I don't know. Yeah. But as of the April patch Tuesday, they're going to pull the old edge out of Windows. Like a tooth. That was something they just disclosed. <laughs> like right? a bad right tooth. <laughs> exactly. Like a bad He's tooth. He's going to get up like on his, with his legs on the chair and just yank that yeah. thing right out. Well, right. it's different so when from you apply, IE because IE yeah. had so a lot of legacy it, users, but this I doubt. No, there so, were, I don't think there were many yeah. legacy edge users. No, IE eleven. We don't even know when they're going to pull Never. that out. Like, yeah. and they they haven't even right. give us a date. Like, that's in there, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, probably forever. 
So we should we should discuss the two side issues here. Um, one is for developers. There's a an edge HTML mm-hmm. component that will still exist in Windows and is still supported. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is that? And that's is for that... app de- like uh, store app developers that want to use web content in their apps can. Okay. It's like a little, you know, like a plug and that, So whatever. that's the old engine, not the Chromium en- engine. Is that the idea? Right. So that's still <clears throat> still around, still supported. Obviously, Microsoft would like to have developers move to the new version, but they also understand that there's probably thousands of developers who are just like, look, we, this thing works. What's who cares? Is it a DLL? The uh, the HTML? Yeah, most uh, almost certainly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, okay. Uh, yeah, it probably is. Although the way that store apps works is different, so I'm not actually. Oh, sh- okay. Yeah, who knows? It's some sort yeah. of component, it, callable. Component. It's something conceptually it's a library similar to that. Yeah. 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 So it is this exactly. Trident that you're talking about? Is that what that is? No, it's the originally. Okay. It's uh, the. I'm getting the name wrong. It's. It's like Edge HTML. Like there's a V2 Oh, Edge HTML. Version. Yep. yep. Yeah. So not that it matters, but IE had an engine. Right. Mm-hmm. That was Trident. That was Trident. Yep. Yeah. Legacy Edge, was that Trident as well, or did it have its own engine? Well, they, it was sure Trident. It was forked right? from Trident, but it's, yeah. yeah, they call it something else. Um, yeah. yeah. Trident is a fork, actually. Yeah. So it's exactly. perfectly named. <laughs> and yeah. then... Neptune's right. fork. That's what we call it colloquially. Mm-hmm. Uh, and right. then they have the new Edge engine, which is Chromium. Yep. Yeah. But there are now presumably... That's available. Uh, I'm getting the, I don't feel like Edge HTML is exactly the right name, but is that right? I think it is. It's like, cause I thought it was like web control or something. Or yeah. Something. In other words, there's somebody who's using it. and Well, Edge, Edge HTML is the browser engine. So, okay. um, hmm. yeah. Web, web view. It's, I think it's called web view. Web view. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Web view. Yeah. So web view, which is HTML, edge HTML is the you know, legacy edge and web view two is the one for, um, this is new version of always the hard thing. Yeah. Saying goodbye. Saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, uh, you know, people, well, that's the second point actually, right? What about those people who, do, who do like the old edge, right? I'm sure. Liking it. Who cares? It's well, not about bad. using it. It's not about liking it, but but what if okay. you used it in your app and you would break your app if it if the engine disappeared? That's right. Different. So they're not going to get rid of that. But I mean, I'm just talking about end users. Like there, there are there probably people still, who like it. I bet there, there are still features in Edge, right, that are not in the new Edge that yep. they are living and dying on. You know, unfortunately, that's the no. Nature. I hear that all the time. I hear people saying, you know what? I don't really even like the Chromium Edge. I like the old Edge. I like the way it looks better and the way yeah. it worked better. And I'm like, oh well. That's nice. I mean, You're the one percent. Horribly broken inside, right? We can all agree to that. <laughs> but um, I don't think yeah. there's a way, though, to um, continue yeah. to keep it after applying the April patch Tuesday update. I think there's no way, right? Yeah, the only way would be to block that update, <laughs> right. which you know Microsoft does not recommend. And and of course, probably not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Time moves yeah. on. I mean, I, I and I honestly. When, it's so long ago, it's weird. Over a year ago, Microsoft announced uh, the first stable version of Edge, which was not really feature complete. A no. year later. Yeah. No, I mean, there's all kinds of things missing. Yeah. But they filled that all in over the past year. And I, I would say of the legacy Edge stuff that was notably missing from the new Edge, the biggest one was probably a set of features actually related to PDFs. Right. Um and side by side, uh, it's possible that the old Edge still does some stuff the new Edge does, but they f- they really filled in a lot of those features. Over I, the I year, so. love the uh, hand, hand, PDF handling on old Edge, and I, I feel yeah, like yeah. new Edge does everything I want to do. It's got, you know, drawing That's and highlighting thing. and yep. markup. Yeah, but there know. was a time, like when I first, I don't know if it was maybe last January or earlier than that, but for a time, it didn't even support like basic things like uh, table of contents. Yeah, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. But it does inking and all that stuff and highlighting and notes yeah. and comments and things. It, it does. You know, I'm not saying it does everything I don't actually know, but yeah, like you, for me, it does everything that I need now, which it didn't, mm-hmm. you know, say a year, year and a half. This is always tricky because Microsoft doesn't want to put a third party out of business. They don't want Adobe, not, you know, Acrobat to no longer have a place in the Windows ecosystem, I would imagine, right? So they're very careful when they add these features not to kind of be so complete that mm. you go, well, I never, you know, I know bye bye Adobe. Um, yeah, but don't you also feel like when it comes to PDF, it, it has become a very it common sh- browser. It feature. should be part yeah. of the uh, operating yeah. system, well, just it, like a browser. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have to look at Chrome. Like, what yeah. does Chrome do with PDFs, or yeah. what does Safari mm-hmm. do with PDFs? And I bet it's pretty similar. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it can do, somebody's asking, does it do text to speech? Yep, there's a read aloud now. Mm -hmm. They added that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see like, uh, you know, for instance, I use rubber stamps with my signature uh, frequently on PDFs to put mm -hmm. a, you know, a signature in there. I don't see that kind of capability, but right. it's good enough. I mean, it yeah. does form I use, filling and yeah. I mean, well, I would say pretty. most people who use a read PDFs, this does everything they want it to do. Yeah. And then if you and needed the full the service, you you know, f full set of features, you'd buy something. Right. Or, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Although I noticed, like uh, with Defender, that they started that way. Defender wasn't quite a full mm -hmm. antivirus because they, you know, and then they slowly now at this point, there's no point mm -hmm. buying a third party antivirus because Defender does everything uh, an antivirus does. Right. Yeah, and and third yeah. party antivirus uh, vendors had to kind of adapt by adding yeah. other things That's to right. the product. That's right. So the suites mm -hmm. are pretty full yeah. featured now. So I think uh, PDF support's pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. I think so too. I would yeah. say. Yeah. It doesn't have like um, uh, like tracking features like no, like uh, you can add notes and send it to somebody else and they can see your notes and that kind of thing. You know. Stuff like that. Um, you should use Word for that, though. Word does that. Mm. I'm just trying to think of what's missing. Right. I'm trying. To, I mean, it does, it's honestly. It, I'd have to really think about this because I, I I know when you save, you can add notes, you can draw on it, yeah. You can highlight, yeah. Right. You can, mm. yeah, that but, kind of stuff. But then when you save that, is that something you can? I don't think there's a text to tool. I'm looking at it right now. I don't see a text tool. Mm. Maybe there is, and I'm just not I'm a not text tool. It. Meaning, like I could okay. type. Type stuff. Oh, to type type on it. Yeah. yeah, I can draw and I can highlight and I can erase. Yep, 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 yep. I don't think I can type. Yeah, I mean, so. What is but it? so it's a, it's like basically a viewer. It's the kind of thing you'd expect in a browser. To be honest with you, it's the kind of thing you expect in a browser. It should be in a browser. You know, I don't. Hmm. I don't. I don't use any of the non-reading features. But I was just me neither. It looks like I don't that's, that's yeah. like if you draw or highlight, you can save it as a different PDF and yeah. that stuff retains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the documents, that's good. Yeah, so you could hand you could handwrite your notes. So <laughs> I think, yeah, right. exactly. Red pencil it. Right. Um, all right, we've really. Anyway, what's the date on this legacy thing? I, it's March, right? March. Yeah, so March is March Patch Tuesday is when it doesn't get any more security updates. And then oh, so April Patch like Tuesday is when they actually take it out. See, they should take do the, That's not how they should do it. <laughs> that's exactly the opposite way. You don't take out the security features and then take it out. You take it out first. Because right. that means there'll be a month that people be, can use it well, without security updates. No, so they'll get they'll get their last set of patches on March Patch Tuesday. So right. it'll be protected, right? Oh, Up I get until it. And then April. you'll have a month until April and then yeah. it just disappears. Right. So that gives you your month of like, yeah. okay, warning. guys, this warning. is really when it's happening, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, that, that's fine. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Are they going to do a big pop-up? It says, oh. you're st everybody has it's the new little... edge now, right? There's nobody... All right, who... I would say, I bet they're not going to do a pop-up just because, yeah, we've pretty much already upgraded people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You yeah. all have it. You don't need, you don't need to worry about right. the old one. Yeah. It really... And if you, have, if you have the new edge on, uh, nothing will happen to you it only like the only legacy edge gets removed, right? And so it'll just be very not no, nothing you have to worry about. <laughs> That's the other controversy, actually. So tell me if you think this is controversial. I've heard from uh, several people now who are complaining that Microsoft is essentially yeah, it's almost like they're delivering malware because it's something they don't want. They're like, I don't use Edge, so I don't understand why you're going to force install this thing on my computer that I don't want to use. Now. My response to that is there's a system component called Edge that's being upgraded to a new version. Microsoft does this all the time. It's not a big deal. Um, you well, use you know. it. You just don't know you use it. That's how well, web views yeah. are rendered in all sorts of stuff, including Outlook. Right, right. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, obviously, from a security standpoint, you would uh, want the newer version of this on yes. your system, not the older version. Yes, I, I'm sure their standpoint is I don't want either version of it on my system. Well, but <laughs> you know, I think they're thinking, I don't enough. use um, this as a browser, so why install it? And what they don't yeah. understand mm -hmm. is there's a good reason to install it. It's not just a browser. As, you know, mm -hmm. That's sure. what IE is always, that's, that's you know, it's tightly yep. woven into the weft of Windows. 
<laughs> well, thank you, David Bowies, for going through that for us. But I think, uh, <laughs> or no, actually, who was that? David Newcomb, right? The Microsoft, or was that his name? Brian. Bill, Bill Newcomb. I bet Bill, Bill Newcomb, Newcomb is thrilled that you Bill mistook Newcomb. him for David Bowie. The That's other guy, great. the Netscape guy. That's good, yeah. Well, they were both lawyers. The point is, <laughs> lawyer's going to lawyer. Lawyer's going to lawyer. <laughs> and Weaver's going to weave. Was that his name, yeah. Bill Newcomb? Was that it? Bill Newcomb, right? Bill Newcomb. Where's he now? Is he so. off on an island with... Yeah, uh, good question. That's a good question. I don't know. I haven't heard from him in a long time. Nope. Um, oh, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, he's a part partner of the San Francisco Giants baseball oh, team. Oh, yeah, that's what happens. When you leave Microsoft, you buy a sports franchise. Exactly. Yes, right. It's 50% uh, <laughs> philanthropy, 50% sports team ownership. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> All right, yeah. so Edge, bye-bye. Right. And does uh, it matter if you're on 1909, 20H, 128H2? No, most all of them are getting it, right? Okay. So. yep. 1803, 1809, 1903, 1909, 2004, and 20H2. It's if you're before that, no, I believe. Right. But right. there's not many people on older versions. Just people who are sometimes are on long time long term servicing channel might be on something older, I right. guess. But we have a question about Xbox here from someone <laughs> in my feed. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Edge. I know where this and is Edge. Okay. Does Xbox Series XS still use Edge legacy like Xbox One? Yes. Oh, there you go. This is this that thing we Ken just discussed. That was Duncan is... Sanders. Oh. <laughs> Well, Ken, stop stirring up the pot for crying out loud. <laughs> no, no, so, um, yeah, so Xbox still has the old le uh, legacy edge in it, including the new Series X and S. Um, Microsoft, Brad asked Microsoft about this just the other day, and they have no comment. Um, I think it's reasonable to expect that we'll see a Chromium version of Edge on Xbox at some point, uh, obviously, right? Um, right. Because the, the browser that's in there now is based on, literally, is the legacy edge code base with a different yeah. front end. So um, they'll have to, they'll, I'm sure they'll. Why, why you is didn't think any software could bring Xbox Series X to its knees? Well, wait until we get a Chromium browser on there. <laughs> <laughs> no, is that why? Yeah. Because of performance that they're still running the old edge? No, on I don't Xbox? think that's why. I think it's yeah. because nobody uses the browser on Xbox, not literally, but it's such a small user base that it's just not a, it's not a rush concern, you know? Like there's yeah, a browser works. Yeah, it's that's fine. really true. Who uses the browser? Yeah, but I'm it is your anyway, game console. It, is like, <laughs> it used to, well. It used to be. I don't know. It's, it seemed like for a while, TVs, game consoles, they all had browsers yep. in them. They all had one because it was the only way yeah. to reach certain yep. services, that's I guess, it. on the yeah. web. You know, and now it's like, well, everything has a. We don't need that an app or whatever. Yeah, we yeah. don't need that no more. But yeah, I went. Yeah, I mean, they, anyway, they won't comment on it. Um, I could yeah. almost imagine them just saying, you know, we don't need this thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the browser, but on the uh, console, but so far, I guess we'll see. But I, I expect them to yeah. put out a Chromium based version. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Boy, got a lot <laughs> of mileage out of that edge. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of big news yep. in a way. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Here's a little. No, I had so many people saying, "What about IE 11?" Like that question just kept coming up over and yeah. over, and I'm like, "Yeah, we don't know when they're going to take that out." I we think too many I, too many enterprises use it. That's for, right. They and do. It's, it's yeah. there are way more they're customers tremendous. that actually use IE, which is depressing, but a fact, right? Mm -hmm. The yeah. legacy edge, yeah. and they're important customers, right? Yeah. I mean, right. they're managed enterprises yeah. that, for some reason, compatibility with some kind of an internal site have to use that browser. Um, mm -hmm. But why can't they me, use Cred? IE compatibility mode. That's that's always kind yep. of my question. Why can't they, right? Um, I don't know, but I mean, I'm going to discuss and say maybe they literally have compatibility issues, you know. Right. And so until they solve those, they're not going to yeah. pull IE alone. Yeah. I just guess, but yeah. Makes sense. Uh, for those just joining us, no, I'm not suffering from intestinal disturbances. They're... <laughs> Sorry, guys. They're repointing the <laughs> bricks on Mary Jo's uh, building, which means there's yeah. a guy right out her window. What does it mean to repoint? That sounds um, different See, from what they're actually doing. 
You know all that cement that's in between bricks and it starts crumbling and falling out in little crumbs on people's heads? <laughs> yep. And eventually so the brick like, falls on people's heads. Yeah. If right. Yeah. Right. So they have to drill in, take out a little of the cement, like and then dentist. pack in fresh cement. It's basically a root canal for your for your <laughs> facade. Yeah. Um, okay. So they're out here with drills, the drilling guy with, out yeah. cement. Little Dremel, <laughs> little Dremel tool going around the bricks. It seems like the exterior of a building should be something that can handle the weather. Yeah. You know, it's an old. How old's your building, Mary Jo? A hundred years old. So there yeah. you go, Paul. Yeah. Hundred yeah. years. Hey, my house was built in 1980. Why is that any different? <laughs> <laughs> I think if you were hundred years old, you'd expect a root canal from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> sure. They should do though, like the dentist does, with little pointy tools first. I know. Really that would be nicer. In there. Yeah, get in there with like a magnifying glass and just <sighs> look for the soft I know. spots. Instead of just drilling relentlessly. Just wince yeah. if this hurts a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen to that. Wow. So if people, if you hear that. You guys that, should hear it. It's so loud here. It's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's probably, it's so low, it's such a low frequency rumble that it's mostly rolling off. But there are yeah. those people who listen to us with big subwoofers. We're, yeah. We're going, what's going on? <laughs> That's going to be the type of sound you kind of hear in your sleep now going forward. Oh. You, you, you'll imagine it's there when it's not. You know. Yep. You should see poor Sirachi. He's looking at me like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> Cats are interesting because if it's rhythmic enough, they know they're, we've seen the brain waves. They tune it out. They no longer hear it after a period of time. Yeah. He went to sleep after like an hour yeah. of listening to the drill. Yeah. Eventually they figure out, that's eh, nothing. And no one's coming they, in. They don't even hear it anymore. But if yeah. it's but if it's kind of sporadic, they never may never yeah. get used to it. All right. Yeah. Sure. Kind of like uh, Windows uh, 10 updates. Um, <laughs> is this possible that I'm misreading this? Windows 10 2004 <laughs> is ready for broad deployment. Is this, am I looking at... Last I know. year's it's not, is this a, an onion headline? It's it, what's <laughs> happening. No, yeah, this is what happens. Um, and I, maybe Mary Jo knows this off the top of your head. I I, I don't. Um, but it seems like this is coming later and later in the cycle it is. than it used to, right? That's uh, correct. So it is. I have this vague yeah. memory that it, I'll just make updates because I don't remember exactly. But like when <laughs> 1903 was a thing, and 1909 yeah. was coming. Before 1909 hit one day, all of a sudden Microsoft was like, hey. Windows 1903 is available yep. for broad deployment. That means, uh, uh, barring any bizarre problems with a specific hardware peripheral that's not your actual computer, like something you attach to it, mm -hmm. you should be able to seek this thing and get it, right? Pretty yeah. much. Uh, it's, right. So this answers the question that people have been asking for the last few weeks. Okay, I'm 1909, which is the previous why am I update, stuck on, yeah, and yeah. I'm worried because they're not going to. Yeah, I don't. I can't remember what it is. They're not going to support it anymore or something. Right. Um, right. But that's kind of hand in hand with this. They're basically saying. You know, if yeah. you're on 1909, Although, you're going to get the next version, which is 2004. I, th there is an uncertainty around these versions and end of support and why people aren't moving forward. I mean, I, I, yeah. it's not always obvious, you know, why that happens. Um, and then when you think about, uh, I don't remember 1903, but certainly, I think 1903, but certainly 1909, uh, 2004, and uh, 20 H2 were all minor, minor updates. Very few new features. Yeah. So very, very small mm -hmm. upgrades. Um, it, you know, it kind of begs the question on two fronts. One, why would why would this take so long? This is not a big update. Like, yeah. what, what this should have been available for broad deployment, arguably six months ago or whatever. And then the yeah. second one is, um, well, why? I mean, if you can move forward to this thing, why not just go all the way to 20 H2? Yeah. Like, I mean, I wouldn't most people? Yeah. If they qualify for this update, don't they really qualify for 20H2 as well? And not always. You know? I know. Right. Uh, right. Which I that, can't that's explain. because 20, as you've told us many times, well, just to re reiterate, 20H2 was basically an update, a bug, bug fix for 19, yeah. or 20, 2004. It was not. Yeah, but, it, but even 2004, although it was always delivered as a feature update, um, I think, um, was also a very small update. I mean, you know, yeah. as far as the actual. You know, mm, like in other features. words, when you think about like what 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 could change in the OS that would um, harm compatibility, mm. right? I mean, it's right. if you're if you're making yeah. a major change to the operating system, I mean, yeah. But if you're making like minor changes, like honestly, the baseline for compatibility, especially for hardware devices, right? You would think mm. between versions would not change or would change 
very subtly. This, you know, this ep, uh, Lenovo ThinkPad T470s, which is, I don't know, classic. Five, yeah, it's a classic now. It's like classic. five years old. It's on 20H2 already. I mean, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, and and you see that, but then you'll talk to someone with a Surface Laptop Three, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah a Microsoft stuck on 1909 yeah. or whatever yeah. version." You know, I, it, yep. it, I, it it is a really hard thing to understand. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And then it's going to be really interesting to see if and when 21H1 shows up. Like what what that whole curve looks like, right? <laughs> like how long it takes that to roll out. Are they out done with the beta on that? Is that are they getting close? It hasn't gone to we, beta. I don't think it's been yeah, in beta yeah. and release preview not even yet, in, not right? Even, wow. Mm -mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Not even, I don't know. that. Have they ever publicly acknowledged this as a version? I guess maybe. No, they day, haven't. Maybe. What? They haven't. Oh, maybe they won't well, do it. I think it's come up 21H1. Somewhere. Maybe they no, won't do it. <laughs> what is wrong with my head? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a misshapen I mop. think your hair looks great, actually. Are you still getting the barber who comes in the tent and puts his hands through arm holes? No, I, I actually, I, I, I'm over. I always wait too long now. I just, I don't know. I'm getting a haircut on Friday. Nice. Yeah, every month now. We, we, we all wear masks. This is just to Bruce do Willis head for me at this point. Just... <laughs> Paul, if you're not bald yet, you're not going bald. Good news. I know. You get a lot of hair still. Don't Good complain. News. <laughs> you're not losing it. It's going to stay there. Oh, it's, I don't know. <laughs> Anywho, um, are you telling us that's yeah. a comb over? <laughs> yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's a giant. It's all, it's all fake. It's a comb over. Um, no, so we don't even. They've never said there will be a twenty-one H one. I don't believe. <laughs> really, that's really okay. interesting. No, but there is going to be. One. Uh, that we assume there is going to be one. Um, you know, I like I said last year, I saw so, an engineering schedule from inside Microsoft that didn't have it on it. Wow. So I was like, I wonder if there is one. Uh, but since then, Windows Central's heard yes. And I think maybe there's been references to it showing up like in documentation, kind of like hidden in documentation. But it's supposed to be a really small update to a small update. So then, then, it, then you ask like, okay, if it's all the same base code, what right. is, you know, like what is holding things up and why yep. would Microsoft not be pushing it out to people in broad deployment right away? I don't know. And why is Microsoft doing something called a feature experience pack when we already have 27 different ways to update things in Windows? Yeah. There's all kinds of questions. We yeah, have. I noticed I have uh, yeah. a feature experience pack um, yeah. on this. Is that, is, is, are there, is there more than one? <laughs> I have, no, there's uh, just the one, I have right? 120.22. 212.5510. There is, yeah, Windows 10 will report a Windows feature experience pack version number. Yep. Yeah. It does that vary between different versions of Windows. So now under the, about, you know, this computer, it's got yeah. Windows specifications. It's got edition version mm -hmm. installed on OS build and experience is, an, is a new entry there. So I've got the experience. Yep. Yeah. So yep. that, um, does that match? It doesn't really match anything, does it? No, uh, that's being kind of independently updated, I think, and doesn't correspond necessarily to a certain version of Windows, I don't think. The truth is, no one needs to worry about this or know about it, right? If you're an, no, IT, if you're an you IT, you do, <laughs> but no one else really. Yeah. No, it's like snipping it. tool is in there. Yeah. I mean, it's like tiny, basically, uh, you know, no, I'm not going to say inconsequential because one day notepad is going to be in there. You wait. Yeah, um, yeah. But they're, they're updating these features independently of the oh, operating man. system. So in theory, they don't have to wait for the next version of Windows to have a, an updated snipping tool and updated shell Oh, experience. that's a good way to do it, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then we could have a situation where we had, like, say, two different versions of Windows 10, but the Windows Experience Pack would be the same version between the two. Stop it. Yeah, I would, stop I would it, think, I would think stop yes. Stop it. Why are, you, why are you causing trouble for us all? <laughs> I have to, uh, someone has to think about this stuff, Leo. So the takeaway, just to reiterate, is 2004 which is almost a whole year old, is ready for broad deployment. So if you're see, on... That didn't take long. <laughs> see? And if you're on 1909 yeah. and you're worried about the end yeah. of life, don't worry because, well, you could seek right now, right? And you would get 2004. And yet, someone hearing that is going to go seek it and say, I just did that and I don't have it. I know. Yeah. Yep. And this is the... I, these are the unanswerable questions. It's actually... I think it's a re, it was removed from the Bible early on. But mm -hmm. um, we just don't know. What, what book of the Bible was that? It's one of the, like, uh, 
the book of Delphi Bob. Bible. It's the Delphi Bible. <laughs> oh, the Delphi Super Bible. Oh, there we go. Hey, let's take a little break. When we come back, Microsoft 365, a Intel engineer stealing trade secrets and bringing them to the Holy Land, Xbox, <laughs> and somebody in the chat room said, you know, for Patch Tuesday, we really should have Micah come on with a cocktail, a Goodbye Edge cocktail. <laughs> but oh. uh, we, we have a cocktail coming up yep. uh, for Valentine's Day, which is on Sunday. Yeah. First, though, a word from our sponsor, uh, Melissa. Did you know, did you know, if you've got customer data, that like expired milk, 30% of your customer data goes bad every year? That's money down the drain. Visit Melissa's developer portal. You'll get, uh, you could update that. You can make sure your data is accurate and current. So you get, you're always reaching the right customers. You're not bothering customers by sending multiple mailings to the same address. You're not sending mailings to the wrong address. Melissa's been doing this fresh data things for 35 years. Why throw money down the drain? You might throw that old milk down the drain, but you shouldn't have to throw your money down the drain with bad data. Melissa can do so much more than just verify addresses, though. Emails, phone numbers, and names, all in real time if you want. So there's a variety of ways you could deploy Melissa on-prem, of course. Uh, but you can also use, do it as a web service. You could do, use their secure FTP processing to do it kind of asynchronously, upload it, have them process it, and download it again. That's nice for a mailing list, things like that. They also have software as a service so that you can include it. They have a very nice API in your own software, your customer service uh, portal, for instance. You know, customers are notorious for... I do it all the time, flipping uh, two digits in my address, you know, just from typing it too quickly. And that's not good. You don't want to deliver that mail to the wrong address. Melissa actually fixes it automatically. Their global address verification service works in 240 plus countries and territories at the point of entry. So you only get valid billing and shipping addresses in your system, whether it's you entering it or your customer service rep. You can also add public uh, data to your customer record that helps you get to know them better. Things like property and mortgage data, marital status, social media handles. And the nice thing about Melissa, they protect you and your customers' privacy. Absolutely. And they do that by going undergoing continuous independent security audits. They are committed to your data security, privacy, and of course, compliance requirements. You couldn't use them if they didn't, right? They have the utmost dedication to your data security. Over 10,000 businesses trust the address experts. We use them. You should, too. And it's a nice thing to know. It, you know, that Melissa also is supporting communities and qualifying essential workers right now during COVID-19. You can actually check to see if your organization qualifies for six months of service free. Just apply online. Melissa.com slash twit. M-E-L-I-S-S-A dot com. Slash twit. No need to put up with sour customer contact data. <laughs> Try Melissa's APIs in their developer portal. It's easy to log on, sign up, and start playing the API sandbox 24-7. In fact, you can get started today with 1,000 records clean free. Check it out. Just see what a great job they do. Melissa.com slash twit. The address experts. Melissa.com slash twit. Back to Paul and... Mary Jo and Mary Jo and part two of Windows Weekly. Act two, Microsoft 365. It's time. You know, Carnival is coming up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Just a couple of weeks away. Uh, I think Microsoft Viva <laughs> is perfectly timed. Perfectly timed. Not to be confused with Viva Pinata, the old Xbox no. 360 game. Viva Pinata! <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, they don't. In, uh, I'm embarrassed to admit that my current game obsession is not Call of Duty, not blowing up Nazi zombies. It is hmm. building a little island on Animal Crossing: New Horizons on my Aww. Nintendo Switch. Oh, <laughs> oh, little dogs and cats, and flowers and. We're gonna February fifteenth Monday is Festival in the uh, 
Animal Crossing in the universe. <laughs> so we're getting all sorts of fancy headdresses. I've got a festival outfit that I'm going to put on. And it's so exciting. This is not what Microsoft <laughs> FIFA is, though, I think. It is not. <laughs> what is it? Well, you tell me what it is. Do you remember last week we, we were making some guesses about this experience employee experience platform and we said we're going to find out the day after Windows Weekly what it is. And so we, we found out and we mostly were correct okay. in, in what we thought. Um, so there's four pillars of Viva. There are four different applications that are going to reside in Teams, basically. So there's one called Viva Connections that's mostly like SharePoint and Yammer repackaged and made into a, an employee portal. There's Insights, which is my analytics, workplace analytics, the Headspace meditation app oh, integrated in there. That's cool. And virtual commute. Just what yep, you so want your employees to do is just yeah. sit there with their eyes closed <laughs> right. for it's an hour. It's supposed to promote well-being. No, I'm meditating. <laughs> uh, it's Headspace. It's right there in our well -being, Viva. well-being, guys. <laughs> little transition no, between work and good. home. Look, how yep. are you feeling? Oh, Lisa Great. would just hate this. How are you oh. feeling? Take a Give moment. us a rating. Give us, how yeah. are you feeling? There are no feelings at work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling productive, Leo. How yeah, are you feeling? That's how you should feel, yeah. and that's the only one I want to hear about. Oh, people okay. love kudos. Yep. Kudos mm -hmm. received in the, whoa, whoa! Oh. I just oh. over kudos. <laughs> too many kudos. Got a few many. Uh, I over, too many. Where, where is it? It's way up here. Oh my gosh. I zoomed in. You zoomed. Here, I zoomed too much. Here's the kudos. People Here's love kudos. kudos. Can you do brick bats as well as bouquets? That would be <laughs> no, the nice. Other ones are called cooties. Nice. Cooties or kudos. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, then there's two other. Learning is um, a portal for basically helping employees continue to learn at work so your manager can recommend things for you to read and courses for you to take through Microsoft, you know, like we said, through LinkedIn Learning, but also through various partners. And then Viva Topics is the Project Cortex knowledge management uh, pieces like topic cards, topic centers. So we were pretty on in our guesses of what this was. Um, we don't know the price. Did we know the name? Because I don't remember you saying Viva. Um, do we know the name? I don't think we knew the name. No, I would have. I would have picked up on that. <laughs> yeah, maybe we didn't know the name. But, okay, but um, what is this? What What is new here? Right? Doesn't this right seem like a lot of kind of rebranding of things that are already? It did does. They have all that kind stuff, headspace there. and everything in Teams. Most of it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did. So you know, when I saw this, I saw it more as like Microsoft's building a. I hate this word. I'm going to use it. Solution. Um, so, a solution you know, for so they learnings? Can, yeah, learning. A solution for learnings, Paul. Um, mm -hmm. So that people don't have to try to assemble all these different pieces together and make sense out of them, but they could just, in theory, go to their, you know, Microsoft E5 licensing page and click yes i want this i want this module i want this oh, so module. you don't you don't just because you're using teams you don't automatically have the viva insights tab i right. doubt you will um they haven't talked about licensing and pricing for most most all, almost any of this okay. so far and they they've won't talk about it yet. start they've got buttons on this one page for start meditating plan your focus time Review all one-on-ones. Book learning time. Send. Is there a button that says "Get back to work"? Because <laughs> yeah, really, what the heck is all that other send stuff. Send praise. The only button they, that has to do with work is end your day. Is ending work. <laughs> and then how are it's you? Going to click five buttons and call it a day, and then be like, you know, I'm not feeling that great. I'm going to oh, see you guys tomorrow. A bunch of buttons. I did my job. Wow. So you know, my theory is none of the three of us are the audience for no, this. No, no, no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it right. is it's interesting that people. corporations are so touchy feely these days. That doesn't. I know. I would like I the occasional star, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You you need your gold. Put it on stars, your forehead. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the you idea think it's young is young people, young folks. 
Yeah, I think younger people really would eat this up. Like, mm-hmm. if you talk to younger people, they they really care a lot about things like, you know, one-on-one time with their managers, getting kudos. They care about this stuff. Me, I'm like, I don't ever want to talk to my manager, see my manager, or interact with my manager. People care about jello shots and staying out late on Friday <laughs> nights. I don't know what you're talking about. No, it's in, it's a culture gap. There really is a generation is. gap because it I'm is. with you, Mary Jo. The last person I want to talk to is my boss. It's like, if I yeah. don't see you yeah. forever, yeah. I'm happy. Uh, and then, yeah. and then um, young, I've noticed some of our younger employees, they say, you never give me any feedback. And Ask I, Micah what he thinks. Yeah. I bet he would love this. I say, I you know, I say, I'm doing you a favor. I'm staying out of your way. And they You'd don't like, like Leo, it. Leo, I've been waiting for you to acknowledge me for the entire time I've been here. Oh, Thank man. you. <laughs> 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 is that because there's too many participation trophies in that generation, or is it really? Oh, for sure. Is it a better? Is it a better way of of working? Is it a, is it kinder, gentler corporation? I'm I'm open to that. I feel like we uh, veer from extreme to extreme uh, in many things, yeah. and I think we, we certainly the current there is a. How do I say this without insulting everybody? You overcoddled oh, children. Why, why would you stop? <laughs> go ahead. No, I. Please go forward. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's no, the I worst like part. Especially is the- during the pandemic, right? If you're, think about if you're in yeah. HR and you're trying yeah. to onboard new employees who yeah. are like, in, like say late twenties, early thirties, right? And they can't come into the office and have new employee orientations. They can't have happy hours with their colleagues or water cooler talk. This sure. is, this is you trying to put this in a technology basket and say, okay, we're trying to simulate these events for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, right? and I think it's important to remember, too, that um, this is a special time and not a good special time. Yeah, it's a yeah. special people, time. Especially single um, people who are working from home. It's hard. Yeah, it but really you know, right. um, yeah. for some people, this isn't going to change too much, right? I mean, I, for the best yeah. case for scenario for some people going forward, it's going to be like you can come into the office sometimes, you know? And yeah. I, I think that what they're trying to set in place here is not necessarily just for right now. It's for this, you know, coming age where it's going to be a little more hybrid and, uh, you know, some of what we're doing now and some more traditional stuff, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yep. Micah says, I'm an old man. He's a, old before his time. He's an old yeah. soul yeah. and a young man. He says, I don't want to talk to my manager <laughs> ever if I don't have to. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Okay. So, you know, one thing Microsoft didn't say about Viva, but I'm going to say is I think Viva is the first example of what we talked about on the show last year, Meta OS. So Meta OS is this internal work that Microsoft is doing to try to take components that they've already built, like planner and streams and tasks and files and whiteboard, and combine them in new ways into this whole life experience where you're, you know, you have your work life and your personal life and it's just Microsoft being at the center of it through Microsoft 365. I think this is meta OS. And I asked and they would, they said, we have nothing to share. They didn't say, Mary Jo, you're an idiot. No. So I think there's a good possibility. This is the first product manifestation of that. Hmm. I'm the only one who cares about that. I know. (laughs) <laughs> well, not necessarily. No, I, I no, I, I, you know, when Microsoft talks about Teams being bigger than Windows, right? Yeah. Or Microsoft right. Teams literally is a platform. And it's extensible, and all of these yeah. things have some hook into Teams. It's not always exclusively Teams, but right. Teams is, you know, pretty much it. The one I would say across all yeah. four of these. Um, yeah. 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 So so far, the only pricing and licensing piece that has been public made public about this is the topics module, the project cortex stuff is going to be an extra $5 per user per month on top of E5, right? So a lot of people are afraid. They're saying, what if all those other modules are $5 per user per month on top of E5? Like I can't afford this platform, right? Like it's crazy. What is this? (laughs) Apple one? Yeah. Um, so we don't know. We don't know if the other ones will be um, the same price. We don't know if you'll be able to like, um, pick off different modules and mix and match, or some employees will get all of them. Some will only get one um, of the additional modules. It's very fuzzy how they're going to basically monetize, how Microsoft's going to monetize it and how users, how and if users are going to be willing to pay for that um, yep. as a system, yep. right? So, yeah. So I have not seen this myself, but some of this is actually available today. 
Hmm. Uh, and some of it yeah, is topics coming is, much later. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I yep. think there's a public preview of insights today and a private preview of learning. Yeah. Of learning. And that I means mean, that Microsoft must have introduced this because there's a demand for it from their customers, right? I mean, they didn't make this up out of nowhere. So well, I, feel this, I, is, I owe, this is them goodness. building a product they wanted for themselves. Oh, right. Okay. Don't you think? Maybe. I think Microsoft well, said this would be amazing. And then some of their bigger customers were like, yeah, that's cool, right? Like, if you, if you well, build yeah, it, I, 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 what company is that? I want to find out who's doing, who's <laughs> doing all that. Well, no. So think of the biggest customers they have, like Chevrons and those kind of companies. They have a lot right. of money to put into things like, oh, yeah. you know, teams and, and employee and, and management. They're always systems. trying to figure out how to keep their employees from jumping out of so a I, window. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> I don't disagree. I, I'm sure this was something in part from internally at Microsoft, where they either had something like this, or people were saying we need this now because of what's going on in the world. But I, I always think back to. It must have been last February, well, mar maybe March, but certainly February or March, uh, Jared Spataro was like talking about this new way of work. And like, this is, we're never going back. Remember, you know, he said uh, to the way we used to do things, it's, it literally is going to change forever because of what's happening now. And I think this is like a, again, it's not, it's not necessarily anything new, but they've plucked all these little pieces and turned them into these modules or whatever. And I guess literally modules and they kind of address that thing they said a year ago, right? Like, and that's what I, I, I sort of, what I meant earlier when I said like, this isn't just for now when we're all working from home. This is mm -hmm. like a bunch of portal stuff for the future when it's, some will be working from home and some won't. And there will be these hybrid experiences and you have to be able to accommodate the people who aren't going to come into the office every single yeah, day. You saw Salesforce is, is saying it's over, nine to five is over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are they going to do with all their office space? They have a oh, huge they built tower that in New York. Beautiful building in New York too. They have one in San Francisco yeah. with strippers oh, man, dancing on the roof. One. It's wild. Oh man, the New York one is in Bryant Park and it's beautiful and massive. Yeah, they have a huh. whole tower here. <laughs> huh. So yeah, I wonder what they're going to do with all that office space. Maybe maybe you do need to do stuff like this if if uh, employees are working at home a lot. I don't know. I also yeah. I'm, call me cynical, and I guess this is generational, but I think this is big business trying to pretend that it cares about you, trying to cover up <laughs> the the true nature of the relationship, which is that you know you're essentially a slave. You know you're you know you're yeah. So it's well, like we I, care we care about you. We really do. Right. If you cared about well, it, you'd pay you me. You got to keep people happy. I mean, <laughs> I, I agree yeah. with you. I mean, this was like an, everyone has this lesson. I, yeah. my wife was laid off from her first job at American Express, and I was, I, you know, we were only in our early twenties at the time. But I was like, American Express doesn't care about you. Yeah, like, that's an important yeah. lesson. You're the smallest in your use piece in the giant puzzle to learn. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. it's not adversarial. Uh, there's no, a relationship. but it's just the reality of the but relationship. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a business. Yep. Yep. Um, oh God, I just depressed myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, do you mind? I'm just going to take a little break. Big business is terrible. I just want to meditate for the next half hour. We can come back and finish. Yeah, this just later. click that button. We'll give you some kudos. We'll give you some kudos. Some kudos. What else should we talk about here? Um, you've got these notes here. Let me read them. Microsoft adds two power apps. This is it, though. Yeah, that's the, right. That's the power apps. Is it? Well, two, uh, two. In other words, two apps for Teams built with power apps, right? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, which is kind of interesting. And I, I, I don't know where these come from exactly. In other words, is this mm -hmm. like some high level Microsoft 365 team thing, or is it a Microsoft Garage thing that was written by one person? Yeah. I don't actually. I don't know, mm -hmm. but. Yeah. Uh, those two things are bulletins and milestones. And uh, bulletins is an app for like a communications team. So I know this, we're talking about a big enterprise that has like an internal communications team yeah. where they have to share company information mm -hmm. around with employees. So it's a place for that stuff. And then milestones is yet another way to track <laughs> status and updates. Yep. Sounds like a to-do solution. I know. Don't you need another um, planner and to-do app? Yeah, oh you do. My, <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I think I think the point of this one, like, why would you have yet another thing that does this? Is that one of the issues with any kind of to-do solution is that everyone has different needs, different businesses yeah. have different needs, and so forth. And so, this thing is extensible, and it's a uh, 
it's the type of thing people can customize uh, for their own, yeah. uh, you know, for their specific work requirements or whatever. Mm-hmm. You but know, I, 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 I thought it was came interesting. Out of nowhere. They, yeah, you know, but you know, not entirely out of nowhere. Because when I saw oh, okay. the way they described it, they were talking about mm-hmm. business processes. And remember on the earnings call, Nadella kept talking about business processes. And I'm like, oh. I, you know, I said, he is always for, foreshadowing something they're going to announce. And I was trying to figure out what around business processes it was. I'm like, it's something with power apps, right? It's got to be. And then this comes out and I'm like, that's what he was talking about. <laughs> Do you think Microsoft's the number one customer of power apps? Like they, that it's, that's an example of something they built themselves. for themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe they sure. are. This also, it builds on top of the thing that currently is named Dataverse, which was DataFlex, which was common data service. It's gone, had a lot of names, but it's basically the, an internal database um, for their power platform. Um, mm. So it shows that they're, you know, building on top of this and extending that whole platform. And they're going to keep doing that with other kinds of modules. I bet this, these are just two of what's going to be a growing family of power apps, base teams, apps. There's a lot of apps yeah. in there, but you know what I'm saying. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was interesting, though. Um, they really they're trying to make Power Platform bigger than it has been. Like you know, they they talk about it as low code, no code solution, but it's yeah. way more than that, right? It's I feel like it's it's the glue that they're going to use to hold together um, not just dynamics, but like teams too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the re- the reason they go with Power Apps for this kind of stuff, because why would they talk about how an app was made, is because literally you can, as a user, change it. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can, cha- you can customize yep. these things, or at least one of the two, uh, to work yep. for your own needs. Yeah. Yep. That's my guess. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, okay. Okay, now let's talk about something even more confusing than that. Teams? Bro! <laughs> Why don't they call it Teams 365? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so Brad found this somehow. I don't know how he found this. Um, oh, I can but tell you how he found it. He how? logged into the uh, admin, admin thing. Admin center. His, and it was just in the notes. For, and he's like, huh, so, they never announced this. No, and I logged into mine, and it's not in mine. So oh, I'm like, I okay. Um, so... Right. There's this thing that showed up in the um, admin center in Microsoft 365 and Office 365 called Teams Pro. And Microsoft describes it as a new service plan for Microsoft 365 and Office 365. And it says it's going to bring the ability to do webinars in Teams and it's also going to bring more meeting insights. Okay. That's all it says. It's coming in mid-March. There's no other information about it. And I'm t- I'm seeing on Twitter all these MVPs who are like, what is this? Like, what the heck is this thing? <laughs> Where did this just come from? It's not in the roadmap. We didn't know about it. Some people think it's a rebranding of part of um, Microsoft 365 E5. Like, it might be a rebranding of a piece of that. But Microsoft, I've, I've asked them for comment on this. I'm like, so people are asking me, where did this come from and what is it? And it's coming like in a couple of weeks and they don't know anything about it. And they said, we haven't, they haven't even said we have nothing to share. They just haven't commented at all. I think they didn't even know it was in the admin center. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it's it's confusing what this is. Um because you, I think you can kind of do webinars now with live events. I mean, it's not optimized for webinars, but you can kind of do that now. Um, and then Meeting Insights is this capability that already exists in Outlook, which is the thing that if you're going to do a Teams meeting and you want to get the documents that are likely to be part of the meeting sent to you so you can review them before you go to the meeting or if you miss the meeting and you want to review the documents and the meeting notes after you can use meeting insights to look at that i'm like okay so i guess that's going to be coming to teams if it isn't already there but it might already be there i'm not sure um so yeah i i would like to know what two three eight seven eight two that's the number on the on the uh, message center uh, is. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what this is. Right. I suspect they didn't intend to Me too. reveal this right now. I think this was a mistake. In fact, they probably... It was probably an Ignite. 
probably Ignite, yeah. right? Like I'm like, it's probably an Ignite announcement that somebody accidentally put in the roadmap somehow and here it is, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, if we know more, if we find out more, we'll update you. But that's all we know is it's this thing called Teams Pro. We don't know how much it'll cost, if it'll cost you anything extra, if it's if um, it's yet another new version of Teams or we, we just don't have any information, sadly. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Hmm. <laughs> um, hmm. Microsoft is testing. Oh, no. A dark, <laughs> a dark mode in Word for Windows. Isn't th doesn't so, this already exist? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, um, the terminology is a little confusing because Microsoft Office has long had uh, theming capabilities, right? So you could kind of go mm -hmm. from like colorful, where it would have the color at the top, but be kind of white elsewhere. So blue for Word, or green for Excel. There was dark gray. Um, white, you can use the system setting if you're using Windows 10. But th what they've done is they've, there's a black office theme and then optionally it can be in dark mode, meaning that the document canvas is also the dark color, mm. right? So this is kind of one of those things, like if you're, um, yeah. say you're using dark mode in Windows 10 and you're browsing the web in Microsoft Edge, which will support the dark mode, but the web pages are white or whatever color the site to, you know dictates. So it's one of those weird things like you, you're you trying to make the screen darker, but a lot of things you're looking at are just white, right? So they light right. up the screen. Yeah, yeah that hurts um, so the in, eyes, especially if you've got darker yeah, around so it. In, in a browser, you can you can install an extension that will make documents um, dark, right? Which is what I do. Mm -hmm. And in Microsoft Word, and I think it's only in Word, not yet Excel or PowerPoint or whatever, um, but that makes sense. It's a document, you know, literally document editor. Yeah. Um, dark or that black theme has a dark mode in which the uh, the canvas or whatever is the same color as the surrounding. It's dark gray, right? So uh, like um, OneNote for Windows 10 supports this, for example. Like the way I'm looking at our notes now, it's dark. The whole thing is dark. Like yeah, the, yeah. The notes are dark too, not just the, you know, the surrounding mm -hmm. part. Surrounding. I have just yeah. been using this now for the past couple of things I've written and... Just gonna say, I'm getting tired of Microsoft ripping me off because I put this feature in .NET Pad, <laughs> and I know that's where they got it from. Bastards! No, I'm just oh. kidding. but um, no, I'm kidding. Anyway, this is an obvious feature, <laughs> and it's um, it's uh, very necessary. I like it. I like it quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. I liked it when I invented it, but you know, whatever. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> you know who hates <clears throat> dark mode? Jeff Jarvis. I really? don't hate it, it but I don't use him. it. It pains him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. See, I yeah. find the normal light mode now to be so harsh. I love dark mode. Mm. Yeah, in my eyes. Yeah, yeah. I really but like. Dark mode. Wait, which one is harder on your battery? Dark mode, right? No, light mode. No, no. the opposite. Light mode, light mode is. Yeah. Oh. yeah, it's better for everything. <laughs> well, you know, I remember for a long time reading that dark text on a white background was the highest contrast and easiest to read. Yeah. Um, because uh, your eyes adjust to the brightest feature that's out there. Mm. Like you don't want to look at your computer with bright okay, lights behind it, right? Right. Look, uh, when Mary Jo or I bring up a web page or a document that's white, you can see our entire face is lit up. Yeah, because you're sitting in the right. dark. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. You well, want well, ambient well, lighting to match the lighting of your screen. I'm a goblin. Yeah. Uh, whatever. I live in a cave. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's really but, what's happened. I um, bet you somebody should do a study on this. Yeah. That as we as computers become more and more part of our lives, we live more and more in the dark. Yeah. Because when, compu well, when okay, computing when computing started, it, we, nobody had dark mode. This is something that's been invented to, well, to except fix a, one of the very first uh dis computer displays was amber on black, Well, that's right? true. And but that's cuz you that didn't was have very, a choice. No, but that was but that was a good <laughs> choice for eyes, right? No, cuz um, then the Xerox Star and everything and the Lisa and then the Macintosh, people said, "No, no, it should look like a piece of paper." Mm -hmm. The the we yeah, they didn't have a choice not with lit from behind. <laughs> well, the problem with this stuff is it's it's like a spotlight in your face. No, and so yeah. I, no, I actually I, think one one of the coolest things that's happened is whatever anyone like everyone has preferences, of course, but um, computer makers are building in, so well, software-wise, obviously, we have blue white light removal, right, in Windows and yeah, all operating that's systems. That's true, this. yeah. 
some um, uh, panel makers, display panel makers, are actually building in yes. hardware capabilities to remove blue yes. light, and they're even more effective. Yes, uh, mm. Dell has that mm. in their XPS, probably 13 and 15 and others, I'm sure. Um, and I, the removal of blue light, however you choose to do blue it, like my, a lot of my you. screens yeah. at night is like look yeah. like orange. <laughs> you know, they're so mm. yeah. non-blue. Um, no, that blue light is supposedly very bad for you. So I just think it's a good mm. it, it's a good mm. thing to have as a choice. And when I saw this Word thing, I was like, oh yes, this is because mm. I spent a lot of time in Word, and Word is one of those yeah. apps where it's uh, you know. Oh, it's and if you've been using dark mode and you right. open a document, as you say, it's just like oh, it's the way you feel like. <laughs> It's like, like someone ah. shining a flashlight in your face when you're trying to sleep. Ah. You know? Very painful. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Very painful. <laughs> I, I, I think this feature looks... I, I like the way they've done this. I, it looks good to me. We should oh, and, to get, and you could get it. See, I should have made this a tip. Um, you, anyone can get this now. It's, it's only in beta, but if, you, uh, if you're familiar with Word, if you go file account, there's an Office Insider tile or whatever you can sign up for office um, if you do let's look at what mine says you want the, the two choices are a current channel preview and beta channel to sign up for beta channel uh, then check for updates you'll have to restart word and then you'll you'll have this i'm going to do the rest of the show we'll just see how it works in dark mode i think it's and see beautiful. how people feel the show oh, itself the is show in dark mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. can we make it a little more orangey <laughs> Mary Jo's uh, top is really blue. Is it, can we do something about it that? It is. I can do that. Can anyway. someone modify my colors? <laughs> I can do anything. Here, I'll hold nice. up this orange thing to I counter have, your blue. I have the technology. There's a little gear on Mary Jo, and I can uh, change her image. Let's just uh, turn the brightness... Can you can you turn my face into a cat though? That's the real question. Oh, I don't think I could do that. Did you see that? The lawyer was <laughs> the best. The lawyer who is a cat. He says, "I'm not a cat. I've taken I'm all." Not a cat. I don't know how to turn this filter off. I'm taking all. I'm taking all but fifty points of blue out of your picture. Well, that didn't work. Oh boy, oh, that's <laughs> I did. That went the wrong way. That went the wrong way. No, no, we want to put the blue back. And then I guess I take the red out, maybe. <laughs> no. Oh, no. No. Now I'm in hell. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm just going to leave it alone. Reset this, please. That was a bad idea. Um, but she is awfully bright. She doesn't match yeah. you, Paul. I, I think it's because I'm a little dark. You're sitting in the dark. He's a little he's a dark roll, curtain. A little he also has a dark curtain turn behind him, down. and he's wearing black. Yeah, now, right? this is, yeah, but now Paul's a little too bright. So let me turn Paul down a little bit too. <laughs> I have the technology. This is kind of fun. I, mean, I can just turn off my remaining light bulb. No, no, no. It's just you know, a little darker. Okay, there we go. See how there, much more pleasant this like is that? when you can't see us. <laughs> 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 Told you. Uh, I know. I intended to make them darker. This is like we're uh, simulating a bar. It is. You know what? All of our shows should be like they're coming from a bar. Right. <laughs> That's brilliant. Since none of us can go to one, we yeah. can pretend we're in We can one. pretend we're in Rattle and Hum. Oh. <laughs> well, we're, we're in dental bar hell. I feel, I feel like, you yes. know. Um, yes, see. we are. <laughs> let, me can, uh, let me see if I can... Get some bar sounds. There we go. There we go. Could it be a bar that's in the rain? Could it be a, <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Should it be a busy bar? Could it be a cafe in Paris in the rain? Is oh, there one of those? We just, all we have to add is a little accordion in the background. So we're, uh, we're doing the show from Rattle and Hum today. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Over here, yeah. A couple of shandies for the guys. Right. <laughs> yes, we need another order of tots. <laughs> what was your was that was that your favorite food to rattle and hum was the tots? I think it was. Oh yeah. We had like um yeah the tots. Tachos. Tachos. When they, when they, so the menu changed over time, but they actually did. Um, what's the kind of steak that's in fajitas? Um, Carne asada. Not, well, I mean the strip the, steak. the cut of the meat is oh, like strip steak. Like I guess yeah, steak, yeah yeah. They they did that. Oh my god, so perfectly. Another order of tots over here, please. Thank you. <laughs> I miss that place. This is nice. 
Should I do the next ad this way? <laughs> They'll want their money back probably if I do. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know what the point of that was. <laughs> All right. All right. You guys, I'm going to fix your brightness. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Put everything back to the way it was. Reset Paul. Reset Mary Jo. Uh, Whoosh. Back to bright. <laughs> okay, the lightness, the brightness comes back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go turn on the lights. <laughs> oh, man. And then I'll slowly, slowly bring the bar down behind me. Oh, <sighs> You so don't have to go to home, outside. folks, but you can't stay <laughs> here. Stay here. Uh, now I'm back to business. I hope you enjoyed oh, this little interlude. <laughs> I need a kudo. <laughs> <laughs> I need a virtual commute to the bar. Give me a kudo. <laughs> kudo over like here. An animal hitting thoughts? like the little pedal to get a pill out of the thing or whatever. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Forward Networks. Onward. Your uh, network is obviously, in most businesses, unless you're selling flowers, I mean, it might even be business important in that business. It's critical, right? Mission critical to most businesses. I want to tell you about forward networks. They help you reduce network outages. And if you think about it, a network outage is a business outage, right? Improve troubleshooting, eliminate errors. They reduce business risk by revolutionizing the way large networks are managed. I got to tell you, I, I talked to the guys uh, and gals at Forward Networks, and it was fascinating. It was started by four Stanford PhDs. Um, they were working on, they had actually had some experience with um, the suffering of network operators, the pains. And they, and they, it was, I think it was their PhD project. It was a really interesting idea. They created, Use their their uh, uh, smarts in software development to create a software map of the network, essentially a digital twin of the network. It's completely accurate. It's a mathematical model and software of your entire network. They have the, the you know the 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 little crawlers and things that go out. They find everything on the network. They build this all up automatically. Now you have in software a model of your network, and it becomes, because it's always up to date, the single source of truth. And I don't, I think you could probably imagine how this might be useful. For instance, before you make any changes to the network, you can actually try it in the software to verify that it's co co configured correctly, it's in compliance with policies. It's, and by the way, your policies can be built into the software so you can automatically validate it. It's behaving just like you expect it to. But my favorite thing is they call it behavior diffs. You know what a diff is if you if you work in software, you know, where you take two documents and you get the diff, the difference between the two, so you can compare them. Behavior diffs for your forward network map allow side-by-side -side comparisons, one quick view. If you and then you can say, okay, if I change this configuration file, you know how often um, we talk about it all the time in security. Now, you change your your uh, BGP tables, your routing, and terrible things can happen. This is not good, but people are still going out there doing it on the bare metal and saying, let's see what happens, and flipping a switch, and suddenly the entire internet is routed through a small town in Maine or something. This is this is not good. If they have, if you have forward networks. You can actually say, all right, we want to apply this configuration change. What's going to happen to the network? And you can watch it. In real time, you can see exactly what happens. You can actually, in real time, or speed it up between any points in time. They, uh, you have a dashboard that gives you key insights. Visualizations, by the way. This is not like a bunch of numbers, not like the matrix scrolling by on your screen. You actually see it. So it's it's easily consumed. You can export it so you can show the boss. I think a lot of times it's very helpful to have that image in front of you and in front of the boss so you can explain what's going on. You can automatically, and this is my favorite part, create an always accurate network diagram with all the information about your network topology. Can you imagine how this would change your life? You can search network behavior, configuration, and state network-wide. It's got a great search tool. It's very intuitive, very powerful. You can perform end-to-end -end analysis 
across your network for both on-prem and cloud. By the way, yeah, it's not just stuff on-prem. It's your entire infrastructure. And pro proactively identify potential connectivity and security policy violations. Make sure the network is configured and behaving exactly as you expect to across on-prem cloud and virtual overlay networks. You can set, check, and customize policies for your entire network. Let me tell you, this is going to give you 50% faster network trouble ticket resolution. It's going to give you 90% faster fixes related to audit processes, 33% reduction in aborted network updates due to identified errors. And maybe, yeah, okay, maybe it's only 33%, but that every one of those 33% errors, that's a nightmare. You flip the switch, the whole network goes down. Yeah, well, eh, not good. Imagine being able to search your network for what's going on. When Forward Networks created this, and again, they were Stanford graduate students, when they created this, uh, they found there was a, an, an instant market for this. PayPal was, was actually thinking of building uh, their own solution to do this. And that when they found Forward Networks, they said, we don't have to. We don't have to. This is what we need. The, these companies, these giant companies with massive networks, are really in, in mystery about what's going on at the ends of the network. Forward Networks has been used by Bank of America, Verizon, Telstra down in Australia, Goldman Sachs, several large government agencies. Goldman liked it so much they actually uh, led their Series C funding round last October. They said, we, we're putting some money in this company. This is, a, this is exactly what business needs. And Dreesen Horowitz, Mark Andreessen, a huge fan, Threshold, $65 million in funding because people know this is a product everybody in business, everybody with a network needs. Network automation and verification for your intent-based network with forward networks. Remember that name. Your business may depend on it. You, you're going to hear a lot about them in the future. There's a demo waiting for you. You can see what it looks like. Forwardnetworks.com slash twit. Forwardnetworks.com slash twit. They've got a podcast you could listen to if you want to know more. Seeking Truth in Networking. I love that name. And that's available on all the podcast platforms. Forward networks. This is, I'm really stoked about this one. This is a really brilliant idea. A completely 100% accurate digital software twin of your actual network. Love it. Forwardnetworks.com slash twit. Thank you, Forward Networks, for supporting Windows Weekly. All right, the lights are back. Mm -hmm. we closed the bar. We're back Boo. to work. Boo. <laughs> I sent Paul three kudos. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I saw this. This was a big news story. An Intel engineer going to Microsoft, yeah. now in big trouble. What happened? He's a thief. Thief. No, yeah. <laughs> according to a report in the Oregonian, uh, this guy. Which uh, is where Intel has name. its last U.S. fabs, I think, right? Yeah. Oh, Baron Gupta. Yeah. Was an Intel engineer for 10 years. Uh, he left from Microsoft in January 2020. Apparently, he brought two USB drives with him containing oh. Intel's trade secrets. So dumb. <laughs> so here's what's interesting about this. Um, a lot of times when this kind of thing happens, it's almost like the two companies involved are kind of fighting each other, right? Like Intel doesn't mm -hmm. want this guy to go to Microsoft. And Microsoft's like, screw you. We want this guy, blah, blah, blah. And yep. Maybe we'll wait some amount of time before he can start or whatever it might be. But... In this case, actually, Microsoft assisted Intel in this investigation. Yeah, yeah. it's not good and for it anybody. was Microsoft that found out that one of these USB drives had been uh, accessed on a Microsoft-issued laptop. So, I'm thinking this guy's in trouble. That's not good. <laughs> That's, That's my guess. Not the good. other one, he said he, uh, he lost the other one. So, that one's probably fine. <laughs> so, this <laughs> reminds me of Anthony Lewandowski... Mm. That's the mm. guy, uh, he's self famous self-driving car engineer. Who yeah, he went to Google. Yeah, he was at Google. Google. Uh, yeah. He, he was at Google. What's the, what's the story? He, he or Uber. But what he did Uber. is he left yeah. Google and founded a self-driving truck startup called Auto, which was then acquired uh, uh, by yeah. Uber. But... Mm. In last year or the year before, he was indicted on uh, 33 charges of alleged theft. He admitted to illegally downloading thousands of files uh, before leaving Google's Waymo. Uh, pled guilty 
was sentenced to 18 months in prison and was pardoned by President Trump. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so that's but that's okay. how big that's how big this is, you know. He yeah. still yeah. owes I think 175 million some huge amount of money in fines. Right. That he did not get pardoned. I don't think you can get that pardoned. Uh, he did declare bankruptcy, so that's kind of a way of doing it. <laughs> 179 million. He's the panel uh, found that he owed 179 million dollars uh, to Google wow. in fines. Can you imagine? That's how big this is. Mm. I can't imagine. It's I, not trivial. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm curious what's going to happen to this guy. Um, yeah. I think it's not surprising, but I, it's telling that Microsoft said no, 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 no. We don't want that. Right, right. Because it could happen to them. We don't need you to steal stuff from Intel. We'll steal the stuff from Intel. You just <laughs> we've got you people just come over here. <laughs> we've got yeah. People can do that. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that they that they yeah. actually said yeah, 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 yeah. No. I think that's the right thing to do. Good for I bet you that comes from yeah. the top. Good for them. Mm -hmm. Right. But what's interesting is what would Microsoft want? With well, Intel actually, that's Foundry a good point. information. Yes, right. Well, in, you know, we, we, we've talked about this because of all the stuff that's been going on, on lately, but Microsoft does have a, a fairly big chip uh, design group or whatever, in, you know, internally. I mean, uh, not just for computers, but probably mostly actually for data center, right? Um, and who knows? I, I don't know what part of Intel this guy came from, but right. we hear that we think computers and PCs and things. But honestly, mm -hmm. he could have been working on data center stuff for all we know. That's yeah. true. Uh, I was, was just trying to find him on LinkedIn. I can't find. I, yeah. I see a, a couple people with the, that name, but I'm like, is it him? <laughs> if the story like, was, hey, I hear you're a little loose with uh, secrets. Uh, contact me. Yeah. <laughs> MJF. I'm a reporter. <laughs> I need sources. You know, I can help you out if you, you want like to put some beer? stuff out um, there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Intel has wow. I didn't realize there's 21,000 people working in Oregon. So they actually, could have sure. been a lot yeah. of things. You're right. That's where they do their semiconductor research and manufacturing, but yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Microsoft is getting into client computing. I mean, for, oh, well, uh, chips for client computing. Did um, you see? And it was complete rumor that AMD is rumored to be working on an ARM-based uh, process. Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, even, Intel is publicly working on uh, x86 type chips that have. ARM-like ARM architectures, yeah, know, with uh, efficiency mm -hmm. and power cores and so forth. Uh, this is from a leaker called Mori QHD. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what Mori <laughs> knows. <laughs> uh, but they're uh, writing. They wrote that AMD is working on two versions of the chip, one with integrated RAM, one without. The prototype is almost ready. They, it, it, mm -hmm. The implication was this was in response to Apple's M1. Right. Right. Uh, so it's a desktop processor, but I don't know. You don't know. Could be all made up. We don't know. Right. All right, Mary Jo, I've stalled long enough. I think we're going to have to let Paul talk you about it. You did your best. I did you my did your best. best. What can I say? <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I mean, in my defense, it's February and there isn't a lot going on in the gaming world. Uh, I want to play Minecraft Dungeons. I didn't know that was uh, a thing. I kind of do too. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like still don't Dungeon understand. Crawlers. Yeah, I don't understand why they got rid of Minecraft Earth. I, I feel like that could have been it never worked really well. A big deal. I think yeah. maybe they just there was something wrong with it. It was so, a good demo. So Dungeons is like Minecraft, but it's a dungeon crawler. So it's like Yeah, you yeah. you run around and beat stuff up and I know, like dungeon action crawlers game. actually. Yeah. I enjoy those. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, Diablo but with Minecraft graphics. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Which well, always anyway. puzzles me. I see my eight, our eighteen year old playing these eight bit games, and he loves them. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. you don't you, you grew up on like virtually real experiences. I know. And you want to play? Yeah. Eight. No, my my kid, same thing. Like he, my my, my son is someone who refuses to watch black and white movies. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Just refuses. But then you know Minecraft. It's like yeah, I could do that. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very. I strange. guess you get to pick and choose. 10 million people play Minecraft. This was your story. I'm just stealing the headline. Yeah, and it's across, that's across platform. So um, it launched, uh, actually, I think it launched cross class platform um, about a year and a half ago, not even a year ago, I guess. Not quite a year ago. So it's Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and all versions of Xbox Game Pass. So console, PC, and Ultimate. 
The chat room <laughs> is uh, is showing me. They said, meanwhile, uh, the Unreal Engine is working on humans that are indistinguishable. I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you got your 8-bit, but you also have the meta-human creator that right. it looks like these are real people in a game. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I, those are amazing. And like for anyone who's been playing video games over the years, you've kind of seen how this has improved. But there's always like this kind of fakeness to it. Like the hair looks like a you could still a helmet still or on something. Uncanny or, Valley. There's a little bit of an yeah. There's uncanny something valley. right. Yeah. But these people that you're showing now, are almost anyone, perfect. for the most part, are really yeah. I mean, I think they look you still more have to real. suspend disbelief. Like you have to, you kind of know they're not real, but but they're close enough. Yeah, but, I wonder, though. I mean, you know, those, um, like the Star Wars movies where, or shows or whatever where they've had... Um, yeah, but they're always like people, in dim, dimly lit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, oh, for sure. For sure. Know, well, so, I mean, so those those are mixed, I would say, mixed success. I mean, sometimes yeah. they look great. Sometimes you're like, eh, you know. Yeah. So it's so yeah. funny that we have this these 8-bit games like Minecraft Dungeons, which are huge. Right. And then we have, you know, I'm sure Call of Duty will be more and more realistic. As time goes by, you know, just be a bunch of guys sitting in an office doing nothing. They do. They don't, they don't use the Unreal Engine for that, do or they do they? I don't think so. I think they have. They have their own engine. It might even vary by game, right? Because they're yeah. different studios. Yeah. Ransomware mm. hits uh, the uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven company <laughs> project. That's Red. too bad. They've, oh uh, my god. Has there ever been a company more deserving? No, no, I'm sorry. sorry <laughs> One thing after another um, for them. Oh, my God. Could, could someone show those hackers where Facebook is? <laughs> uh, and then speaking of uh, simulations of real life that you've turned yeah. into a game... Forza. So now we're going to need a we're going to need a player card to figure out where games are now. So for, Forza Horizon 4 is coming to Steam on March 9th, right? That's actually kind of a big deal. This is the first Forza game to ever be released on Steam. They didn't say this. I assume the prices are going to be identical, right? And um, Forza is a game you could make a career out of paying for this if you wanted oh, yeah. to. There's like, like a Call standard of Duty. edition, like Deluxe, Call of Duty. Ultimate. You know, yeah. yeah. But it is fairly impressive. Um uh, no, it is literally impressive. Actually, there are over 600 cars. This it wow. does. It's going to do cross play, so you can play across the different platforms and all that stuff. So, but when it comes down that's to a it, big deal. you're just driving. I know. I, 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 I if you it. like the, a, a droney sound in your ear and then like a little it. bit of twitching right and left, that's pretty much a lot it. of the game. Uh, <laughs> but it looks great. I mean, it looks great. One of the one of my goals in life was not to have to commute, so I could right. go home and have more time with my fancy car in a game. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. Now, you know what's not in these, these notes? What about Vault, mm -hmm. Paul? What is Vault? What is Vault? What's, what Vault about, and what? Bethesda. Didn't mm -hmm. Microsoft announce that they were going to create a separate division for Bethesda? Oh, yeah. They bought Bethesda. Yeah, that's right. And, that just happened, didn't it? And the, is it called yeah. Vault? Right. Yeah. I was confused because I read a few different takes on it, and I'm like, so what is happening? Like it said, they created Vault, but they're going to put Bethesda in it, right? <laughs> and Zenimax. Zenimax, yeah. Zenimax, is the Zenimax which is the, yeah, the, parent parent company, the company, right? Yeah. yeah. So right. we think of it as Bethesda. Oh, you know where the name comes from? Fallout, yeah. right? Don't you? Didn't does it Fallout start? You you you're in the vault. Mm -hmm. And then you leave. It's a, it is a Fallout reference, yeah. Yeah. Yeesh. Just trying <laughs> to read a website. So I, it's like, ah, da, da, da. I just thought it was interesting because it made me think that maybe they're going to treat Bethesda like they treated LinkedIn and GitHub in terms of letting it run itself and be separate. You know, like. So that kind of keep it probably separate. makes sense because uh, they. I think that's how they kind of handle all of their game studios really, right? Like Minecraft is, that, is still Mojang yeah. and it's its own thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. So instead of being in the crypt, you're in the vault. You're in the vault, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it looks like, I mean, I don't, I think this acquisition is going to sail through. I don't think they're going to have any yeah. issues. In fact, I think the revelation about that should be an indication that they think it's getting close. The CEO just died, right? Of um, yeah, Bethesda. Right. What? Yeah. Yep. Really? Yeah. yeah. Young guy. Oh, God, that's Look terrible. at me. Look at me with the game knowledge, guys. Holy cow. She's just like, you're bringing us all the stories. <laughs> all right, I get it. I get it. Okay, next week you can do the Xbox. Oh, fine. She's wanted right. to do that all game along. Game pick of the week. Game pick of the week. <laughs> game pick of the week. <laughs> <laughs> it's like trying to get the food away from Sriracha. We, <laughs> there's a good game. Do you ever do, I've done this with our cats, and it's, it's surprisingly mm -hmm. amusing. You could take an iPad, and they have various... Uh, f cat fishing games on there mm -hmm. where they have very yeah. realistic looking fish yeah. and the cat swats it and have you ever oh, tried yeah. that with Sriracha? <laughs> you probably don't have an iPad. Yeah. I, no, I put it on the big monitor. I put like birds and squirrels and he goes crazy. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's interesting when the animals react to what's on a screen. Like sometimes it will be like the dog will start barking because there's a dog yeah. in the background right. of a show and she thinks yeah. there's a dog in the yard or something. Right. Yeah. Um, and sometimes the cats will just sit under the TV and they're, you know, <laughs> looking at something that's occurring. <laughs> yep. I don't know. Yeah. But I, honestly, they mostly kind of ignore that stuff. It's weird. Like it's almost like they don't see it. Um, you know what Sirachi loves though, which must be from a previous owner, I have to say. He loves football. <laughs> football. <laughs> like when football is on, even if I, I just... I not a Giants fan. <laughs> no, even if I'm just flipping channels, like suddenly football, really? and he wakes up and he's like looking at it like, yes, oh, it football. Must so, so you got him, he was a rescue when you got him? Yeah. And he was full grown. Two and a half, yeah. Oh, so, so he had somebody else had him for a couple of years. He had owners. Yeah. He had a couple of owners before me. Yeah. So I'm like, wait, he loves somebody football. Somebody loves football. <laughs> Yep. If you, yeah, that's interesting. If you crack open a beard, does he come running? Oh yeah, <laughs> but not funny. not to drink it. He just like smells it and then runs off. Really? Like, oh no! <laughs> really, Lisa yeah. has discovered it's the best thing because for a long time, you know, you can't really call cats. No, but she's got these little Friskies oh. treats in a bag, and when she rattles oh, yeah. the bag, no she matter where that. they are, they oh, yeah. come running. Totally, yeah. it's like an ad. <laughs> Yeah. It really works. It does work. It, that that does work for sure. Yeah, it's <laughs> wild. All right, let's um, take one more break. And then the back of the book, mm -hmm. Mary Jo's Game Pick of the Week. It's very exciting. <laughs> it is. Somebody says yeah, dark notepad. this day was coming. It'll be dark notepad. That's, that's, that's yours. .netpad does that. And Paul invented it, as I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our sh Thank you. <laughs> yes, I'm giving him credit. credit. <laughs> Kudos to you, Paul. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's two this I show. I accept your glitter or whatever form it takes. <laughs> that was one of my favorite uh, Super Bowl commercials. What was it for? But they, it was a very brief part of a larger commercial where somebody did a baby you know, gender announcement and everybody's blue... <laughs> <laughs> and then all this powder exploded. Everybody's blue. And I, what was that for? Was it Squarespace? I can't remember. It's a good ad. Brief moment in an ad. That's how bad it's gotten now. I'm noticing little bits, <laughs> little bits of ads. Our show today brought to you by, this is, uh, this is something I hope you will remember. I know you will. Hover. Uh, Hover is one of those things you keep in the back of your mind that when the next time I need to register a domain name, I'm going to Hover, Hover.com. It's where I register all my domain names uh, because it's fast, it's easy. They don't try to upsell you, so you don't have to click through 20 pages of, no, I don't want that, no, I don't want that, no, I don't want that, like some of those other guys. The new year, I think the roaring 20s are about to begin. Maybe you've got an idea for a blog, a portfolio, an online store. Maybe you just want a more memorable uh, redirect to your LinkedIn page. Yeah, you can do that. And of course, everybody should have a p custom email address. It's much more professional. Plus, uh, it never changes. You know, you can you take it with you for the rest of your life. That's, that's what I do. Hover's got uh, the best domain names and email addresses just for you. I use a dot .email. Uh, address for my email. I just, it's great. It says what it is. Um, I have .ninja 
for some reason. <laughs> it says what it is. If I ever, if I ever want it, it's the dark mode version of Leo Laporte. I think email at your domain name is really important. And, you know, I think at first people say, well, for businesses, for sure. And that is true. A business shouldn't be at AOL.com or Yahoo.com. That just doesn't convey professionalism. You want to build trust for your brand. Hover has domain-based emails for all your needs, small or large. It's easy to set up. They can even do the email hosting. You can add as many mailboxes to your domain as you need. Uh, you renew your domain, your mailbox renews, so you never lose control of it. The prices are great. <clears throat> it's just a no-brainer for businesses. And, of course, uh, when you do email through Hover, you can use the email app you prefer. It doesn't change anything. The, what changes is your address. And that's what you want. You want a professional address, and that's what I do. I, I have dozens of email, or not email, of uh, Hover domain names in a whole variety of ways. Hover makes it very easy, very affordable. They have specials every month, so you, I always check every month to see what the current you know special is on the TLD. And I often buy another, <laughs> I have a lot of TLDs. And I love it that they don't upsell you. They have exactly what you need. Built-in who is privacy automatically. It's part of the domain purchase. Uh, people sometimes forget that when you register a domain name, unless you do privacy, uh, your name, address, phone number is public record. So uh, Hover you know, has that built-in privacy so people don't see your email, your phone number. It's a great way to eliminate spam. They have pro-level tools. I use their DNS all the time. Email management tools as well that are intuitive and easy to use. Hover Connect makes it really easy. Uh, that's what I got my kids to use when they were setting up their websites. Um, WordPress, automatic. Uh, Squarespace, automatic. They're just a bunch of you. One button, connect your domain to your site. And I think it's important to say in this day and age that at Hover, you are a customer, not a source of data. When you do your email, it's tracker-free. Hover protects your identity, protects your information. They're trusted by hundreds of thousands of customers who use their uh, email and their domain names to turn their ideas into a reality. I'm a very happy Hover customer, and I have been for years. Whether you're a developer, photographer, small business, Hover has something for everyone to expand your projects, to get the visibility you want, to get that custom domain name that says, you know, you're the real deal. Go to Hover.com slash twit. You'll get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for a whole year. Hover.com slash twit. It's the best way to register your domain names. <clears throat> enter your, As an example, enter your uh, business name. <clears throat> Don't enter a .com or anything and just see all the different extensions you can have um, or your personal name, your family name, and all the extensions you can have. Hover.com slash twit. 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. Now it's time for the back of the book, and I think we'll start with Paul... The rock. It's tip of the Good week. news, Mary Jo. It's more Xbox. Yay! Game so. pick of the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just tip of the week. Um, this was kind of fun. So a Microsoft employee tweeted this out the other day. Apparently the new Xbox wireless controllers, these are the ones that ship with the Xbox Series and X and S and also work with Xbox One if you have the uh, older consoles. Have a, have a secret sync feature, right? So everyone knows there's like a sync button on the back, you know, top back of the controller, yeah. you kind of press it in. If you're syncing it with a PC, you go through the Bluetooth uh, connection there. If you're doing it on a console, there's a sync button on the console. You can do it with a mobile device also through Bluetooth. Um, and increasingly, we use these controllers with more than one device. Like I run into this all the time. Like I might want to play with uh, like an Android device mounted on a clip and, you know, you, you connect them together and then I go back to the Xbox and like I got to, re, you know, configure, resync it. So they secretly remember two devices. So the way that you do this is you sync it with one device and then you just go back and then you just go sync it to another one and then you can double tap that sync switch on the back and it will switch between the two devices. So you don't have to keep doing an audio, like a manual sync every time. That's cool. Change device. Yeah, that's, that's smart. I wonder if other so. controllers do that. I'll have to try that with some. Yeah, and now people are like, well, the, I wonder if the old Xbox, you know, yeah. the Xbox One wireless controller does that. I don't think it does, but I haven't tested it yet. So but Timo Wolf, who, uh, who tweeted this, says there's no documentation anywhere for this. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, when he, when I, so I wrote about this and I'm thinking someone's going to come out and be like, you idiot. It's been like this since whatever. And I've never, I just had never heard of this, but I believe this is the first time it's ever been disclosed. He got it from a Reddit post, of course. Okay. Yeah. A couple of years, a couple of months ago. It's good. I, I love how this stuff just, you know, users are amazing. They find stuff. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what they tap every button a hundred times or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it's like the people used to run around in uh, like um, Castle Wolfenstein 3D yeah. to find the secret rooms. Like yeah, you'd be like, boop, boop, just like run down the hall and yeah. like, you know, tap every wall until yeah, you find something. Yeah. Bonus tip. Yeah. So if you were a uh, user of a Google Play Music, you know that the last year or so, uh, Google has been shutting it down, right? And they're replacing it with YouTube Music. So think uh, it's it like two versions ago, but um, it replaced the Play Music app uh, in Android 10 uh, about a year and a half ago. They stopped selling music last year. You know, they've been, uh, you know, uh, emailing everyone, hey, you know, it's time to make this transition. So uh, starting on February 24th, so just two weeks from today, Google is finally going to get rid of Google Play Music. They're going to delete everyone's data. Uh, this is like anything you've uploaded, purchased, anything you've, you know, playlist, whatever you've done. So um, if you want to, you can you can still move that all to YouTube Music. I did this a long time ago, probably August or something, like the last summer, sometime I think. Um, but if you haven't done it, this is the last chance you have to do it, and um, and that's over. At the very least, you should download anything you purchased just to have it somewhere. Nice, so, nice. Kiss it goodbye. Kiss it goodbye. And then this is technically a tip. Um, I'm going to call it the learning pick of the week. Uh, Raphael actually sent this to me. Uh, he's not into iOS development, but I thought this was kind of cool. If you've ever looked into iOS development, you surely have run across the fact that every year in the spring, Stanford University has a course led by, I think it's Paul Haggerty, I think is his name. Uh, it's really well done. It's changed over time. It used to be Objective-C, of course. It switched to... Swift at some point several years ago, and then the mo I think the I want to say the last two years they've been using something called Swift UI. Uh, they update it for each version of iOS, of course, because of its timing. It's a little weird because they announce new versions of iOS and new features in June, right as the semester's ending every year. And so, usually for the fall, they'll do like a a document that explains like how you have to you know get it to work with the new versions of Xcode or iOS or whatever, and you know blah 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 on and on it goes. But so one of the weird things, though, about this course is it used to be available through an Apple uh, a, a app, sorry, on iOS and I guess on the Mac as well, which I don't have a Mac in front of me, was called, might have just been called Books? It might have been through Books. Uh, no, there was they had a learning app. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it. Anywho, it used to be available through, that, that app is gone. So it's like, well, what happened to this thing? It's, it's like a podcast, sort of, like why is this not available through the podcast app? So there was a couple of years there where it just wasn't available. Um, but last year's course, this is like, so this is spring 2020. Yeah, they update it every year. Yeah. So the, the one from last year yeah, yeah, is on the web now. It used to be on iTunes U. I don't know if that's, that's what it was. Saw. Thank you. That, yeah. I couldn't think of the name of that. Yeah. yeah and I used U, to recommend exactly right. that. And then Apple killed iTunes U. They got rid of it. Yeah. yeah and it never went like the, the, the content kind of wasn't there. So the, the videos are on YouTube, and I suppose you could probably just find them that way. But no, but I've used Stanford this page. Now, this is this is I've actually yeah. Done Stanford this has course. a page, so it yeah. has all the materials and yeah. the slides and, yeah. and everything. So it's great. It's a good course if you want to learn this stuff. Yeah, um, I actually this made this app that they're showing here. I made it. Which one? The one the concentration app with the ghost and the spiders. It's an emoji. Oh, you want the one I app. call the uh, the Windows Phone app? You mean? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> with the tiles. But they yeah. walk you through it. And I actually did this app, you know, you can... You yeah, know. so in the old days, uh, the first app used to be a calculator, right? right which is kind of a classic as well. But right. now they do this uh, memory it's game concentration, app, whatever. yeah. It's fun. Concentration, yeah. 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 And you learn, uh, you know, Swift UI, which that's one reason to keep this up to date is Apple is a moving target. Apple yeah, is exactly. always changing how that's you right. do development so yeah cs yeah so there's a link there at the top this when they made this this was probably xcode 11 ios 13 uh and then whatever mavi or whatever the previous version yeah, was but they've 12. switched it they, yeah. they've got some notes about now it's xcode yeah. 12 ios yeah. 14 and right. uh, big sir yeah right the main thing is the uh is the framework which is now swift ui that apple's changed yep. that too it's just nuts <laughs> it's like 
It's like and it's like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. You never finish learning. Are we done? Yep. Oh, good. Yeah. Now go all to the back to the beginning. Yep. <laughs> Start it all. Over it's like again. Uh, pointing bricks on Mary Jo's building. Very You're much never like really that. Done. Yes. Yeah. They've been pointing it never them ends. since <laughs> 1920. Um, yeah. Speaking of developers, Mary Jo's got a dev pick of the week, which is nice. Hmm. Thank you. I do. Um, so if you're following along with Project Reunion, Microsoft's attempt to try to bring together Win32 and UWP development, um, you know that one of the major components of that is called WinUI, which is the um, basically the native UI platform for Windows 10. So right now, if you go to, if you do a search for GitHub and WinUI 3.0 roadmap, you can see something they've done um, fairly recently, which is they put a very much more detailed roadmap up of WinUI 3. Um, and there's a couple interesting things here, and I, I assume they're going to keep updating this. But if you look at what it says about Reunion along the top of this roadmap, it says Reunion 0.5 release, March 2021 Reunion point eight, May 2021. My guess is that is build right there. And then Reunion 1.0 is after that. So when we first heard about Reunion, it was supposed to be out already, the first version of Reunion, and the, the dates have been being pushed back progressively as they, you know, kind of fill in the roadmap and refine the roadmap. But now there are a lot of new elements on this roadmap. Um, and you can see where they're at there. It looks like they are constantly updating it. And so if you're somebody who's a developer and you're wondering how are they doing with that project to bring together Win32 and UWP, you this probably want to check this out. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, there's things on it like reunion, .NET 5 support. Reunion 1.0, what do you think? Late in the year? Uh, you know, at the very top of this, it says... Um, Version three of WinUI will ship in 2021, but I don't know if that is a sentence that they didn't update or have updated. Um, <laughs> so right now they're saying it'll be this calendar year for Reunion 1.0. Mm -hmm. Okay. But not definitely not in the beginning of this year and not by build, for sure. Right. We don't actually know when build is yet, but when I saw this, I'm like, uh, it looks like it's going to be it's May, probably May, which <laughs> yeah, is normal, May. which is normal, right? Like that's usually when build is. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. It I thought the roadmap looks good, <laughs> right? Yeah, it does. So but if you scroll it. down that list, they've, they've chopped off a bunch of stuff. Oh, really? <laughs> they have. Was and they've redone a bunch of stuff too. Like stuff that has gotten new names and oh, changes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, at least example. they're showing their work. I mean, that's good. Right. Yeah. They're doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Things are happening, right? <laughs> but the additional so, yeah, Windows form factors, uh, Xbox HoloLens, IoT, Surface Hub are yeah. no longer on the list for this year. Look at that. All yeah. crossed off. Yeah. Actually, even well, you know, I re Windows 10 Remember when I... When I talked to Kevin Gallo before Reunion was called Reunion and I, we were talking about what their plan was, I said to him, what about what about HoloLens and Xbox and all these non-PC things? And he looked at me like, are you nuts? Like he, <laughs> he just had this look on his face like, what? <laughs> uh, like, you don't think uh, we're going to keep not. working on it for that long, do you? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I was like, or not. OK, so I think I think that's their kind of stretch goal is to do that, but not first priority. You know, it's really basically. weird is there's no relationship between the things they cross off and the thing they're putting in. No, there isn't. I so know. <laughs> they crossed off drag and drop and they put in ARM 64 well, support. Like that's related. Or... Right. They I feel like... Uh, I, so some of this stuff is not complete. So if one thing you don't really see yeah. past point eight, right? So uh, mm -hmm. originally works for Windows 10X and um, the non-Windows form factors were, were going to be for point five in March. And now they're like, yeah, that's not happening. But you don't really. Oh, well, maybe you do see it first. Uh, okay, wait, why is this? It's kind of weird. It is. Kind of it it looks read. like a work in progress for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> they've replaced yeah. acrylic material with XAML islands. Okay, <laughs> good job. Yeah. XAML uh, islands in the stream. Yeah, XAML <laughs> islands in the stream. Uh, very interesting. Yeah. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm glad they're putting it on. Uh, GitHub, though. That makes it very Get up. Yeah. easy for them to yep. update. Also easy for us to see who's doing the updates and what the most recent mm -hmm. update was, because that's the nature of 
yep. get like yep. the last commit is nine days ago. So you kind of know how it's pretty it is. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Very good little thing. Interesting. Know. Yeah. Useful for us all. Uh, mm-hmm. How about a code name? Yeah, I think this is a code name and not a final name. But uh, back in November, I saw Microsoft Research posted something about a technology suite they're building called Surface Fleet. And I just, I kind of just passed by it and I was like, yeah, something to do with surfaces and fleets, you know, like thinking about people buying fleets of surfaces and deploying them. But then when I actually went back and looked at this, I'm like, oh no, this is not that at all. This is actually very futuristic and very interesting. And what got me to look at it again was when Microsoft announced Viva, they had this future video that they love. They love to do these future videos. Like this is what we think things could look like in the future. And they showed this woman working at a PC And the PC had all these like extended telepresence kinds of capabilities. Like people were showing up at our meetings who were holograms, you know, and there were screens that were virtual that kind of folded out of her machine. And I was like, yeah, sure. But then when I looked at the Surface Fleet video, I, I said, you know what? They're actually working on this. And Surface Fleet is described as a system to decouple computing from individual devices and places. So the idea is, and we've seen this in a few Microsoft videos, where you could have a document on your PC and then you just use your finger and you flick it to another machine and it shows up Mm. over there, right? Um, Minority. So they they have a working prototype of this and they have a development platform underneath it that already exists and a toolkit. And I'm like, oh, they're further along with this than... We thought. Wasn't this, though, the Surface Hub stuff? Not really. Like, Surface Hub, like, some of the future videos showed some of these things, but um, it never materialized for Surface Hub. And I don't even know why they call this Surface Fleet unless some of the technology came out of Surface Hub. But later in their documentation, they call it the Fleet. Like, they don't even use the word Surface because it's about decoupling your uh, computing experience from the from the device. So it doesn't have to be a Surface it doesn't even have to be a PC. It could be a phone or even some futuristic device, they say. It's kind of interesting. It I, is. I think he's using with the dock looking thing in the that looks like Zorin OS. What what is what is this? <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's got a yeah, that's got a dock. Yeah. It's really strange. Yeah. It's on a surface yeah. studio. Stuff, that's a surface studio. All the fonts are different. The um, Yeah. 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 Everything's different. You need to analyze yeah. this and figure out what they're showing. I know. And, and how, how much is real, right? It's a um, research thing. It's Swiss. It's a research thing. But a lot of times Microsoft research technologies, even if they don't show up in a complete whole, they show up in pieces in different right. products, right? right? It reminds um, me, you remember the first time we saw Pinch and Zoom? Uh, yeah. Was it Carnegie Mellon? The guy at Carnegie Mellon was demoing it. And that was very blue sky. And it wasn't yeah. very long after that that it started to appear. I yeah. think we should all credit Tom Cruise and Minority Report for showing us the true way where you need a device exactly. for some reason to bring it from screen to screen. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that? I gotta watch it's basically that again. like a. I gotta watch that again. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good. Good movie. Yeah, that was the yeah. pre-crime yeah, so I, movie, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how close this is, but when I saw that Viva video, it was like oh, Microsoft used to have these futuristic envisioning videos. Right. And yep. if you go back and look at those, many of the technologies in those things became products. Just saying. All right. Yep. All right. No beer today. It's yeah. cocktail time for <laughs> Valentine's Day. Is this from Stephanie Therott? It is. This is this is an easy one. This is um I, I anyone should be able to make something like this. Um, a <laughs> bottle of dry sparkling rosé, uh, one third of a cup of cranberry juice, one third of a cup of pear vodka. I still have a whole bottle of cucumber vodka from the last one. <laughs> now oh, we, I have to use there. <laughs> we use that a lot. Lisa, <laughs> See. Lisa made me, I crawled into the liquor cupboard the other day because we wanted to make a screwdriver. She said, do we have mm-hmm. any plain vodka? I said, we have citron, we have berry, mm. we have cassis, we have cucumber. A cucumber we for some no reason. no yeah. plain vodka. That's all, and now I'm going to have some pear vodka, but that's okay. I will say, if uh, anyone was keeping track, I, the recipe I think you're referring to is the Sakatini. Love the Sakatini. Uh, if you run out of cucumber vodka, you can substitute pear vodka. It's 
little different. Still very good. I still have the anyway. sake from that too. That was really good. I love yeah. that. I love, <laughs> I love sake. Uh, so this is a simple thing. You just mix all this together. I will take one exception here. Uh, my wife says that you can garnish with pear slices, frozen cranberries, or your favorite frozen fruit. Uh, speaking from experience, uh, cranberries are basically inedible. Um, I don't know why you would they're pretty. float them they're in a drink that why you did put you, up to your mouth. Why did you put Unless red? they're candied. They have to be candied cranberries. Oh, to yeah, you can get not. dry <laughs> cranberries. Yeah, yeah, we we get like maraschino cherries that are um, in um, uh, really liquor. heavy liquor. Like they're, yeah. Yeah. Those are good. Oh, those are good. But like when you're, when it's like 1130 at night and you've had a couple of these and then you eat one of these by mistake, you're like, this is the worst grape I have ever eaten in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sorry, Paul. That's just, not a grape. Yeah. That's hysterical. Not good. That's very <laughs> not good. That cracks me up. Uh, well, my friends, I'm going to go have a Valentine's Day sparkling sangria. Mm -hmm. Cheers to both of you. Hope you have a lovely uh, Valentine's Day. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I know nobody's gonna. But I, we don't really, yeah, we don't, no. <laughs> no. do anything. Yeah. Uh, no, I probably should do something. I gotta think of something. Uh, we'll be back uh, next well, Tuesday. Well, you get some plain vodka. Is what you can do. There you go. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> this is what I heard. Oh, and then I said, I mean, you got to have the staples. I felt Leo. so bad, you know. I go, oh, she said it's just vodka and orange juice. I said, no, no, no. You got to have some Galliano in there. And then I realized, so sure. that's a Harvey Wall banger, Leo. <laughs> not a screwdriver, which is just orange juice and vodka. Hmm. <laughs> do not hmm. drink Harvey Wallbangers. Those are and very do not eat cranberries. And do not eat cranberries. We've learned something no. here today. That's right. yes. And kudos, <laughs> kudos to you both. Kudos. kudos. <laughs> yes. Kudos to everyone. We've learned that kudos matter. <laughs> Paul Therat is at therat.com. His book, The Field Guide to Windows 10, is at leanpub.com. Uh, and uh, I would follow him uh, on Twitter. Oh, I've been too. updating the tech out of that thing lately. So oh, good. if you haven't downloaded it recently, yeah, at least Get seven or eight of the chapters yeah. have been, yeah, I've been burning through it. Nice. Mm. Lots to tell. Mary Jo Foley is at all about Microsoft.com, her ZDNet blog. Together, they are the dynamic duo of Microsoft reporting, and we do this thing called Windows Weekly every Tuesday. Every Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> you know, I keep coming on a Tuesday and no one's there. I got to remember that. Do not come on Tuesday. Do not come on Tuesday. Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. Um, if you want to watch live, that's at twit.tv slash live. Watch or listen live. Chat with us while you're doing that at irc.twit.tv. On-demand versions of the show at twit.tv slash www. Or on YouTube, there's an entire Windows Weekly YouTube channel dedicated to this program. Uh, you can also use your favorite podcast application and subscribe. They should have Windows Weekly by now. We've given them 15 years to get it. <laughs> <Full> opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you subscribe, you'll get it automatically the minute it's available, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Thank you, Paul Therat. Thank you, Mary Jo Foley. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Wednesday for Windows Week. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks so much for subscribing to a show here on the Twit Network. We do appreciate it. Hey, if you want to make sure you are up to date with some of the most important tech news in a given week, you've got to check out my show, Tech News Weekly. My co-host Jason Howell and I talk to the people making and breaking the tech news in a given week, and it's your nice mwah, taste of what's going on during the week before our big show on Sundays. 